and knows these moves that you're making before you make them. And those are the kind of things that people have to get over. Uh, people's lack of interest in quantum physics or understanding how time works, I think, is the biggest problem here because whatever's happening with the supernatural and Bigfoot, which I think is supernatural, um, is using access to understanding time differently. And that's where I think this omniscience quality comes in. They know the moves you're going to make before you make them. It's a little bit like having your own personal Santa Claus. You know, it knows you when you're sleeping, it knows when you're awake. And uh, these long-term witnesses will tell you that. It's like, you cannot trick these things. Now, whatever happened with Roger Patterson and Bob Gimlin that day, I don't know. I think that's real footage. But they were given the Holy Grail. And for whatever reason, Patty presented herself to them. If you've never seen that again, they're, you know, plus they weren't using a digital camera. Uh, I think there's something to that. So you, you're pretty much toward the side that they're more spiritual paranormal than a flesh and blood then? Well, I, yeah, I think that's come out of my mouth plain and clear this evening. Uh, there's something other going on. Now, are they just physical? Are they just supernatural paranormal? I don't think they're just anything. I think they can access a different state of being that we don't understand. Either they're making you believe these things are possible by some kind of mind control, but I don't think so. I mean, I found single track lines in the snow that disappear. I've had something run up behind me on two legs. So is Daryl. Um, you know, Daryl saw what he saw uh, behind his house that moved unnaturally and, and watched it run away from him. Um, there's just, plus the balls of light that Daryl experienced in concert with Bigfoot activity, including something circling him behind his house with a neighbor and uh, the foul odor, the typical foul odor of a stench. When these balls of light appear before Bigfoot activity, which are extremely well known that you see orbs, before, during, and after Bigfoot stuff, they are, in my opinion, the business cards of Bigfoot activity getting ready to happen. And whether, I don't know what the relationship is, but there is one. Hmm. So, uh, um, is, do you, have you found a correlation between sightings that line up with the same areas with maybe UFO sightings as well? Oh, yeah, Skinwalker Ranch being the prime example. I mean, if you read that book uh, by George Knapp and Colin Kelleher, it goes into specific details about these hot spots, these grid zones or you know, spots of the fawn where um, you will have UFO and Bigfoot activity happen. It's, it's extremely, uh, you know, a, a well-known concept that you may see strange light at the same time you see Bigfoot. Would you agree with that, Daryl? Oh, yeah, I got video of it, remember? Of them, the <laughs> orb going in the sky yeah. and uh, little orbs coming out of it going to the ground. And then that night I recorded the screaming of the Bigfoot that's on TV. <laughs> yeah. Now, let yeah, me ask yeah. you this. Daryl, one of the... Go ahead. I was going to... Let me ask you another question. Um... If they're spiritual, do you believe that they they feed off any livestock? Do they feed off deer or elk or any of the local um, animals, or or do they do they not do that? No, I think they do. But I mean, we saw examples of some pretty excellent animal kills that would have taken. I mean, not that the the rabbit or the snake were were devoured, but we found a deer kill with a twisted neck and a bigfoot hot spot. And it was all tore up. Um, so I think when when they're here, for lack of a better way of putting that, they they have the consequences of being in the flesh and have to have a diet. I think that whatever they do when they're here, I mean, let's just call, in my opinion, Bigfoot an alien. When they're here interacting, they have to shit in the woods. They have to go to the bathroom. They have to eat. They have to do all these things that, that we have to do. But I think that they can also have this supernatural spiritual side of them. And it's nothing new to the 
the Native Americans, they've been trying to tell us this for years, that this is a spirit animal. No, I don't know. Oh. I, I'm going to jump in there because I got one <laughs> little input. I, I, some of my members of my family have married into two different Indian tribes. And I have sat down, you know, a couple of years ago and talked to the medicine uh, woman with the uh, Muckleshoot Indian tribe. And, you know, mm-hmm. she gave me some stories going back over 100 years or more, you know, that big, you know, the, the squaws would be, you know, down washing their, you know, their clothing. They would have their babies there next to them, you know, on the, the shore while they were washing. And, and these Bigfoot would run across the, uh, you know, the creek or river and grab either the squaws, grab the babies, the the warriors of the tribe would go out, you know, to get their loved ones back. And then they would find, you know, remains of, you know, the of their loved ones. So it, it tells me whatever the the Bigfoot. I mean, there's two camps to this. You got the people who said they they give off orbs. They're friendly. And, you know, then you got the other ones that, you know, come back and say, well, they are flesh and blood. They They are cannibal. They do eat, you know, uh, mm-hmm. even maybe each other. I don't know. But. Uh, to the point to you actually physically see one then you you'll get a complete different idea what you know a uh, bigfoot is i don't believe they're spiritual myself i don't believe that at all i if anything is you know maybe coming from a portal or some other thing uh a multi-universe i have no idea but i just you know i i don't know I, it, we, none of us is going to know till we actually physically get one, and then we can get some answers. Right. And unfortunately, well, the, you, you, you know, when people do run across them, it's not when they're out looking for them. It's accidental. It's like anything else. Right. And you could be right. I, my point is, is that Daryl was able to capture evidence that something other was happening. And I think we're splitting hairs by saying paranormal or supernatural. I think that they do access these uh, thin veils and walk through them freely. Uh, so many sounds that we weren't able to play with the sounds of them interacting on the property without ever walking. And they would just pop into existence. And how do we know that? Well, because they'd have to get to the gravel to get to these puzzles we'd leave out. And then they'd leave hair and handprints or little trinkets in the back of the pickup truck or in my trailer I had a piece of driftwood left in the sink of my trailer one time. Daryl already told you about the rock. Um, so either they were dropping down like Tom Cruise and Mission Impossible from the sky and then zipping back up on a rope, or they were able to do something uh, that we you know, could only dream of doing ourselves. Um, one of the more complex uh, sounds that we got, maybe the last sound of the evening, is clip 10, where Daryl and I... Our last night together, me living on the property, is sleeping in the shop with the doors wide open. And around 12.45 at night, uh, I find this woven piece of paracord on top of my recorder. And I wake up Daryl. I was like, did you drop this woven rope that looks like a Native American braid on my recorder? He said, no, I did not. And so I, I fast forward. And on the recorder is the sound of these women and they're standing right over Daryl and I, and they're very conversational. Um, Why don't you play clip 10? I certainly will. Now, who was that? Daryl snoring? <laughs> well, that was one. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, I can't tell whose <laughs> snore that is, but those women were right there amongst us, less than, I suspect, 10 feet from the recorder. And that has all the attributes of an EVP, right? It has this broadcast, synthesized sound to it. It's 
pops into view and pops out. In fact, there's a huge popper hit in the beginning of the first woman speaking. Now, nobody knows what language that is. Um, I have a guy in D.C. working on the sounds. I've got another guy working on the sounds. He thinks that they're old Sumerian. Uh, at first, I thought they sounded Russian uh, or, you know, Mesa or Asian American, some kind of, uh, you know, I wasn't able to pinpoint what it was, but, um, you know, that it's a very complex EVP. I mean, it's kind of the holy grail of EVPs. I don't know of another sound that complex. Yeah, that long. In paranormal community. No, no. that long. That, it's really long. Or, and that is surprising. Now our time is almost up. Now you're writing a, a book. Do you know the name of your book for people can keep their eyes open when it, you do get it published? Oh yeah. So the book's called uh, the Al Moon Lab Living in a Skin Twin. And uh, just put in the final knee evidence on it here. And once that's signed, sealed and delivered, uh, Daryl and I will be presenting down at the Wolf Creek Lodge selling copies of that that's down in wolf creek oregon i think it's called the state of bigfoot festival at the wolf creek inn and tavern incredibly haunted well-known haunted establishment and they're having a two-day bigfoot event i believe in june or july you can look that up at the state of bigfoot at the wolf creek inn and um i think that's our first speaking engagement now, also, you mentioned you do a podcast. How often is it? What is the name of your uh, podcast? Sure. Right. It's called Strange Brow Radio, Brow being the German iteration for my German heritage. So it was conceived in a bar. And uh, so we have a lot of fun. Uh, you know, Strange Brew is already taken. So Strange Brow Radio is a place where I talk to people uh, like you or myself that are interested in the subject matter and then. We do that show every Monday. You can find that at Strange Brow, B R A U, StrangeBrowRadio.com. And then uh, that's a weekly show on Mondays. And then we do a live show every other month uh, at Manresa Castle in Port Townsend, Washington. It just so happens that the 4th of January will be our first 2020 live show from 7 to 10 at the also haunted Manresa Castle, an actual castle in Washington State, in Port Townsend, Washington, 7 to 10, free of charge, and uh, paranormal researcher Mary Bethune will be interviewed by me in the uh, library of the castle. Interesting. Now, also, how can they find you on the media? Are you on Facebook or anything like that? Do you have a website or anything? Yeah, if they want any information about the Al Moon Lab, just go on to my website at strangebrowradio.com. There's links there, old episodes. And then Daryl and I, you know, we're Daryl Adams. Toby Johnson is uh, my real name. You can find me under Tobe Johnson. And um, we're both on Facebook mainly to communicate at this point. Okay. Well, hey, guys, I want to thank you for coming on the show. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Okay, guys, you take care. All right, bye, Gary. Okay, night. Bye-bye. So, James, uh, you know what? Uh, We just got about uh, four minutes. I just want to, you know, again, I want to wish you a happy new year. I do want to say that on uh, Monday we have uh, Timothy Collin back on, and he's going to be talking a little bit more about his implant and what has been going on with him since his implant removal. So that is going to be, you know, uh, interesting. So, you know, uh, uh, James cut cut himself off. I don't understand that. So we'll get him back on. So, you know, again, uh, Timothy Collin will be talking about uh, his encounter, you know, with the UFOs and, and why he thought he made, he didn't even know he had an implant. He went to the doctor because he was involved in a car accident. The doctor did some x-rays and found that, uh, you know, that uh, something was strange in his arm. So, uh, James, why did you hang up? I uh, My Skype acting weird. It just cut off. And then when I tried to call back, the ring was, like, real dragged out. Uh, may- maybe it's when you cut him off, it, it cut you off at the same time. 
I think it did, and it was like still holding on or something. It was weird. Yeah. <laughs> well, anyway, I was just telling the listeners we have Timothy Cullen on.